Hello everybody, this is Justin and I'm back on Critter World. Now, I have some new parents tree frogs which I've moved to a very new natural and bigger vivarium than their older one. So they seem to be liking it, they're very active, even though it's the daytime. Now today I'm going to touch on, this isn't just a showcase, I'm going to touch on how to keep them, how to set them up, and how to feed them, and how to breed them. Yeah, so first thing I'm going to touch on is how to f furnish their vivarium. Now, so you can s before I go on that though, I'm going to tell you a bit about how I got the frogs. My aunt gave them to me and she got them from Koi Gardens in Sydney for free. So that's actually pretty nice. Now on the substrate. The lowest layer has to be pebbles to, su to support the dirt and so water doesn't come flooding to the bottom. The second layer is the dirt. It's very useful. You can use it with you can use sand as well for that layer, for that middle layer, but it's better to use dirt especially if you're keeping plants like live ones like me. And the third layer is fog and moss. It keeps the everything looking nice and it keeps the place moist and stuff. Now, if you're a novice keeper starting out with your first exotic animal or native in my case since I live in Australia, I'd suggest that you don't use real plants, like you use plastic ones. They work for the same purpose and they basically look the same, only you don't have to take care of them. But I have had a bit of experience with this, so I'm using real plants here, which I just got a few hours ago. So yeah, and the water container, you always need a water container so you can the frogs can drink from it. There's frogs there. What? Oh, jeez, what? It's not even mating season and you're going on the wrong way. Jeez. So yeah, you need lots of big long sticks since they're very highly arboreal species. They're tree frogs. Yeah, and they'll need a high box. See, I've hidden mine with rocks and stuff. Oh jeez, I really can't tell you guys how good this this rainforest little cream looks. This is we're filming under the worst possible conditions. There's water on the there's water on the sides from cleaning. There's it's backlit. Seriously, in real color, there are shades of purple and stuff, not just green. It looks beautiful. I, I can't explain it. There's a frog there. Oh, see how fast they are? That brings me to handling, actually, an extra subject. Never handle your frog when your hands are dry. You need them moist. And try not to handle them. They don't like handling them. They don't like people handling, although every once in a while for cleaning and stuff, that's okay. They seriously don't tolerate handling as much as lizards or snakes. Yeah, and I... Yeah, so look at that. Yeah, I'm going to touch on breeding now. You always need a big bottle of water, so... And it has to be easily accessible. I've got rock smooth pebbles, because once the frogs are in the water, their skins are very fragile. So, yeah, smooth pebbles, so the frogs can easily access this and, and get out. So, you, uh, before breeding, you need to spray your aquarium, or vivarium, lots of times, so the frogs think it's rainy season. Because rainy season means everywhere is moist and damp, because when they spawn, the eggs need water, and if all the water sources dry up, their spawn die. And that's one mating season wasted out of only a couple of years. So, yeah, see, they can climb vertical and upside-down surfaces, anything. Even steeply sloped ones. They have those big pads on their toes that help. Oh, see how fast they are? So yeah, now feeding. The crickets that I use are pinhead sized, but I'm starting on wiener soon. So I just put a small amount in whenever I notice that they're running out and put some, put like one or two or three carrot slices in, depending on the number of, oh jeez, stop it. Today you guys are acting really weird. So yeah, I put them in and the crickets have something to eat and then the frogs eat them in turn. Yeah, uh, where rainforest habitats are actually pretty hard to clean, so you need a what you need. You really need to be really, really f dedicated to your task. I prefer to say they're both looking at me, and see how they're different shades of colors. These parents tree frogs, they have the weird ability that is unique amongst tree frogs. Well, not completely unique. I think there's one in Costa Rica that can do the same thing. They're like chameleons, they can change colour within an hour. Not like the wire range of chameleon, nothing crazy, but they can do greens and yellows and 
Well, not bright yellow, like creamish brown and stuff. So yeah, these frogs are actually pretty valuable, about one hundred to two hundred dollar each. That's around the one hundred and fifty mark. And when they spawn, they do about six hundred to eight hundred eggs. So this is a big investment for me. I got these for free, lucky me. So yeah, that's it. Bye, and enjoy. Just a bit of a clip. Show you around. Yeah.